Um, my wife and I have been having Bible studies uh, every day. And one thing that came across our mind was grieving the Holy Spirit. In other words, we were discussing why at various times in our lives, what could be the reason that we're so dry? What could be the reason that, you know, I mean, I don't like to follow feelings too much, but there are just times when I'm dry as a bone and I ask myself the questions and Ruth asked the same questions and answered them. And so we made a list here of things that can grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, these aren't in any particular order, uh, but the first thing that we had come up with was lack of faith. It, if you want to grieve the Holy Spirit, you have a lack of faith in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think that the Holy Spirit is one of the most underrated persons of the Godhead. And he catches a lot of garbage that we dish out, and saying things about him that are not true. They're lies. Another thing that struck us was prayer, prayer, and prayer. Sometimes I, I have to struggle to pray. And when I do pray, I depend on groanings too deep for words. I depend on the Holy Spirit to assist in my prayers because I don't know how to pray as I should. I really don't. And a lot of times my prayers get old, but I will actually ask the Holy Spirit to intercede for me because I know that there's other things out there, other ways of praying for certain situations that I am not covering and that the Holy Spirit will. Um, I think one of the more important things here on this list is immorality, sexual sin. In this day, you can turn on your computer and type in just about any word, and you're going to be taken to a page you don't want to go to. And there is constant barrage on regular television, constantly with the series and the programs. And I'm not, I'm not up here to say I don't watch television. I do. I've, I've gotten so I spend a lot more time listening to different pastors online. My wife and I both do. And some uh, uh, people that talk about uh, prophecy. And I do listen to them. One in particular every every week, J.D. Farag. I listen to him every week. I, I like him. But the main point here is, is that we need to keep ourselves pure. And, and let's face it, Jesus said it. You look at a woman with lust, and you've committed adultery with her already. Well, that's, this is tough because for myself, I've constantly got to guard my eyes. I constantly have to. Another thing that will grieve the Holy Spirit is lying. And boy, do they slip out of my mouth quick without me even realizing that I lied. Just a little white lie, though. It was a lie. And I have to repent, and what's embarrassing is repenting to someone else. You know, I just lied. Don't ask me why. I don't even know why. I just lied. Because I, a lot of times, don't know why I lied, other than I have a fallen nature, and, and I am convinced that if Christ would have went to the cross just for me, 
he'd have covered 99% of the sins in the world. Because I am desperately wicked. My heart is desperately wicked. And I know it. And without his mercy, without his grace, I would not make it. Only he has the words of eternal life. So where else am I going to go? Another thing here that we could get heavy into, but I'm not going to tonight, and that is to attribute to the Holy Spirit things that are not His. Now, there are a, there's a new group out there called the NAR, which is the New Apostolic Reformation. They are, have went a step farther than a lot of churches. And the Holy Spirit is catching all this, I call garbage. I, I don't believe our works of the Holy Spirit at all. Uh, I remember a, a certain pastor one time, he was standing up in the pulpit, I was watching him on television, and, and I grit my teeth whenever I see the guy, but he said, you're asking me why you weren't healed. And he said, do you just think that just, just maybe, just might, be your lack of faith. What a terrible burden to put on somebody. Faith of a mustard seed will move a mountain. And trust me, if my answered prayers depended on this huge faith that I had, I had nothing to get answered. Nothing. Because I get what I've received from God. And, and nothing more and nothing less. I don't try to make myself out to be something that I'm not. You know what I am? My name is Bob. And I play those drums back there every Sunday morning, just about. And that is my main ministry. And that is what I have enjoyed for 40 years. I've been playing drums. I was one of the first people in 1978 to start playing drums in a church, which was called People's Church in, in Beloit. And at that time, I was relegated to the third service at night because the older people didn't come out for the at night and they wouldn't get too upset over a drummer being in there. And yet, we have Andrew here who can take these traditional hymns and change them, and they become fun to sing, fun to play, and they're worshipful because the words are right on the money, as they were tonight. Another thing is having idols above Jesus. The Holy Spirit and God the Father. Idols, things that are more important. I, I don't mean I've got a golden calf in the house. But if I've got something that's more important, I, I've got a routine. First thing I do in the morning is I get a cup of coffee. The second thing I do is read my Bible. There is no variation from that because I feel like I'm taking priority if I had to work on my vehicle if I had to watch some video or something like that I would be taking things out of the priority that I like and that is drink a cup of coffee ask the Holy Spirit to teach me what he would have me to know today because that's what I want. There is a fire that burns inside of me that I never want to have leave. And it's a fire that I want to be pleasing. You know how badly I want to stand before God. And he says, welcome, good and faithful servant. Enter into joy today. I want to hear that. I want to hear that from God. 
Blasphemy, blasphemy of God or swearing uh, is another thing that just sometimes it depends on who I'm hanging around with. I can be a real chameleon. Now, do I use the Lord's name in vain? No, that's something that makes me shudder. But I can get caught up in some of these slangs that just are, I'm one of the guys. And God, the Holy Spirit, has been dealing with me in these areas. This is, these are all things that I'm being dealt with. I'm not pointing a finger anywhere. I got enough trouble of my own, I don't need to point my fingers at anybody else. But that's an area that I'm working on. Keep your relationship with your spouse clean and pure. Fighting with your spouse is not keeping your relationship clean and pure. We need to be quick to apologize and slow to anger with our spouses. That will be the, one of the first things that we can do if we, even if we stub our toe, we can be, it's her fault. It's her fault I stubbed my toe. It's ridiculous. We need to treat one another like we love one another. Wow. Now there's a concept, loving one another. My wife and I made a vow 30 years ago that we knew we would have diff, uh, difficult times, but we made a decision that we would never call one another a name, that we would have to go back and apologize for. And to this day, we have never fought a dirty fight. Never. I have never had to go back and say, I'm sorry for this, or I'm sorry for this word, or that thing that I called you. Oh, I have to say I'm sorry ten times a day. And that's just half of the times that I should. Should be 20, but I only do 10. I, you know, I don't want to get too carried away with this stuff. So keep your relationship with your spouse clean and pure. You will not grieve the Holy Spirit by doing this. Coveting. Holy cow, a friend of mine bought himself a brand new canoe, Kevlar, 17 feet long. The thing just flew through the water. And you know, I think I drooled. I, I really do. Yeah, that's what it is. That's why you guys aren't not sitting up front too far, because I spit when I talk too sometimes. But... Coveting can be taken in so many different ways. You can covet your neighbor's car. You can covet your neighbor's wife. You can cover the carpeting on the floor. I wish my, my floor had carpeting like this. You know, it doesn't take much to covet. And it comes so naturally to us. Stealing, stealing, huh, we don't steal, do we? We, we, we don't steal. Uh, I borrow and never give it back, but I don't steal. I don't steal. Those, that's just one of those common things. One of those Ten Commandment things that we need to pay attention to. Simple, but pay attention to it. Not honoring your mother and your father is a good way to grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, my mother and father are still alive. My mother doesn't know which end is up. And my father's 85 years old, lives in Canada, and I call him about once a week. And he's still got all his marbles in place. I, I can't believe it. He's better than me. I can't remember my name half the time. And he has got, I mean, he can name Packer players and this and that. And he lives in Canada, but he's a Packer fan. So he's got to be a good guy, right? 
Another thing that will grieve the Holy Spirit is out-of-control anger. Holy cow. I, I, I'm out fixing something. I, I, I'll tell you what happened to one day. The other day it snowed. It was wet, heavy snow. And I hopped on my lawn, my lawn tractor with my big snow blower, Mr. Cool. And I was going to plow out this long road we've got there that before my driveway, and I plowed that out. And it got jammed up, just like a snowball jammed up inside there. And so I drove the tractor all the way back up to the house, and I, my driveway's on a bit of a slant, so when I put it in neutral, it started to roll backwards, and so I hit the brake. This is... This is a John Deere tractor and it has some strange features. I locked the brake, lifted the lever up, locked the brake, went back out there again and I could not, I, I thought you just had to punch the brake and it would come loose. No. No. I got underneath there with a hammer and ding, 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 ding. Got underneath there with a screwdriver. But you want to know something? I didn't get mad. Victory. Victory can be sweet. And it can lay a firm foundation for tomorrow. Finally, my nephew came over who was a, a repair small engines. And he hopped on the tractor and pushed both the clutch and the brake in. And it popped up like it's supposed to. Of course, now he's 30 some years old, and I'm 60, going to be 62. And I know, don't seem shocked. I know I don't look that old. Uh, but I was embarrassed. And I just said, I, I mean, it didn't take him 15 seconds. He just knew what I had done wrong. So a little while later, I'm pulling the, my truck out. And I got too close to the edge of the garage, ripped my mirror right off. And what had happened was it, I have a metal roof, and the metal roof, snow slides off down right in front of the garage doors, and I can get a pile this high from one snowstorm, and you don't drive over that. This wasn't nearly that high. The thing was the truck slid sideways a little bit. I got to blame it on the truck. I can't take credit for everything and it ripped that mirror right off so I went on Amazon and ordered it got it in two days didn't regular normal delivery I don't know why they delivered it so soon and this morning at one o'clock in the morning this is how things bug me I was out there tearing the door I had to tear the whole inside panel off in order to take the old mirror off and put the new mirror on it took me 45 minutes had some problems, but you want to know something? I was thankful when I got done. One, I know how to take that off now. And the next time I do it, which might be later this year, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Uh, the next time I do it, I'm going to know. My nephew is a Ford guy. He knows everything there is to know about Fords and fixing them, but he hates Dodges. So I bought a Dodge. He works on my vehicles for me. We, we trade back and forth, and so I don't have to pay the big bucks to the dealership. Um, hate. Murder or dislike for a brother or a sister. You know, Jesus said if you don't like somebody, you're a murderer already. And I come up one day up front here, and there was a gentleman that irritated me. And I went right directly up to him and I said, I'm sorry, I just murdered you. He looked at me and said, what are you talking about? And I said, 
I was angry with you. I was stupid. And according to Jesus, I killed you. I might as well have it was the same sin. So we need to love one another. And it has to be a priority. And no matter who they are, and I'm pretty obnoxious, but you got to love me. Well, I need to love you. I don't need to worry about whether you love me or not. I need to love you. I need to care about what happens to you. This is the reason I'm up here tonight, is because I care for my friends, and I want to share the struggles that I have. And this is, these are some of the struggles. Don't allow your feelings to run your life. You know how many times I get the caboose up in front and the engine's in the back pushing? I have to get things in the right order. The cart in front of the horse, the wolf in front of the wolf. I mean, we've got all kinds of stuff like that. But I... Like today, I was laying, I was going to take an hour's nap before I came here. Now, I'm usually in bed by now. And I laid down, and I was a little nervous. And then the scripture popped in my mind, which is one of the powerful things is when you do scripture memory. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. I said, Lord... I need your help here. I went right to sleep. No more worry. I didn't worry about it coming in, didn't worry about it now. Why? Well, part of the reason is I'm surrounded by friends. How, how can it get any better than that? How can it? Not studying the Word. That's a good way to grieve the Holy Spirit. And I talked about my routine in the morning. Sometimes it starts at 3 o'clock in the morning where I'll have, make a pot of coffee. And, of course, when my wife gets up, it's cold already, so I hear about that one once in a while. But I have a cup of coffee and read my Bible. Well, we need to study the Word of God, be able to accurately handle the Word of God. Accurately. And if we don't know something, we need to ask somebody to help us with that. We need to go to Pastor Dave. Pastor Dave. Or Pastor Dan. Or someone else that you trust. Now, Davey and I have been friends for 20-some years. So it's easy for me, and it's easy for Davey, to talk to me and me to talk to him. I'm fortunate to have a pastor in a church that is my best friend besides my wife. Get caught up in a work salvation. You want to grieve the Holy Spirit, stick a little works in your salvation. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. How much? Just a little bit of works messes up grace through faith. There is nothing out there that surprises God. There is nothing out there that he did not pay for on that cross. I am a free man. I am a perfect man in his sight. I am seated in the heavenlies, like Romans 6 talks about, being buried with Christ and being raised up with him. Seated in the heavenlies. How does it get any better than that? Just a couple more on this subject. Caught 
uh, or depending, depending on the Holy Spirit. If you do not depend on the Holy Spirit, you grieve the Holy Spirit. Give credit where credit is due. The Holy Spirit is practically unrecognizable in some churches. Now, you might ask the question, and even if you don't, you're going to hear it anyway. Since I've been talking about the Holy Spirit, what scriptures? How can I walk in the Spirit? How can I walk in the Spirit? Well, to give you an example, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, verse 5b. Now, I don't like to take scriptures out of context. I was very careful when I took the scripture out so that it would stand on its own and not lose its context. And that scripture is taking every thought captive in obedience to Christ. Every single time I was tempted to be a glutton, which is one of my many sins, I could picture in my mind Jesus. And you know, surprisingly enough, that worked. When you depend on the Spirit to help you and remind you and to fix your eyes in obedience, taking every thought captive, don't let a thought go by that you don't have ca take captive. Uh, tons of them get by. But I catch a lot of them. And hopefully in time I catch even more. The next verse that I love to use is Colossians 3, 2. In fact, those first three verses in Colossians are wonderful. But Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on the things above, not the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So, when you're overwhelmed with Bobitis, you can look and take these scriptures, preferably from memory, because I always forget where they are if I don't have them memorized. And you can walk in the Spirit by them. The last one I've got as far as that part goes is Hebrews 12, 2. A. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. You fix your eyes on Christ. Well, we need to be careful. I know in the screw tape letters, it talked about having Christians pray to a picture or to a cross instead of praying to the real God, instead of praying to Jesus Christ, to the Father. I even pray to the Holy Spirit. There are wonderful things, wonderful wonderful things the scripture and I'm sure that there are many many more that I'm going to run into in fact I run into them every time Ruthie and I have a Bible study things that I can use to walk in the spirit hopefully these things will come to mind for you 2 Corinthians 10 Colossians 3 2 Hebrews 12 2 if they can come to mind and you can walk in the Spirit, and begin. This is a beginning. And the last thing I have, God loves us as we are. 1 John 4.10 In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be propitiation Atonement. Propitiation is a big word. But it's the right word. Atonement for our sins. 
He loved us first. I didn't love him first. He loved us first. How does it get? I, I, I like Davy's attitude. Ain't it great? Ain't it great? You hear that from Davy all the time. Ain't it great? And my response is shut up. <laughs> but he's right. He's right. Life is great. Life works if you work it. If you don't work it, you're going to fail. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this evening. Lord, you know my heart. And hopefully, people will learn from my mistakes. And maybe take some of these things to heed. And we just thank you that your word is there for every problem that we have. And isn't it strange how your word can be written 2,500 years ago and yet it was meant for today? How you can read a scripture and God brings it to mind and it's a scripture for right now. When the Bible says, now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Isn't it strange that that's for today? And we thank you for what you teach us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.